our overall water utilization is very, very inefficient. Even if you take advanced countries, the amount of recycling they do and the amount of kind of, you know, multi-use, multi-reuse. All the Tamil texts to be machine readable and translatable uh, because of being compliant with UU code for various reasons. And I don't want to talk politically here, but for various reasons that was not quite done and a lot of proprietary codes were used and a proprietary fonts were used. My question to you is, uh, as you know, India today holds a presidency for the Global Partnership on AI. So how big is the role of the states in discussions around GPA presidency? And uh, what are the things as far as regional languages are concerned that you can perhaps put across to the central government in order to like, you know, incorporate these ideas? I must confess that we have at least not officially had any interaction yet with the government of India. So it's news to me. What you're telling me is news to me. Uh, of course, we have some of our very fine officers now serving in, in Delhi and in, uh, in, among others, my old finance secretary, Mr. Krishnan, is the Metis secretary. So we'll follow up with him. I, I don't have any insight yet. But I will say that part of the issue with... Uh, regional languages is that the data set and the uh, existing engines in English are so far advanced that it's going to take a bit of work for us. I mean, we have lots of people, we have a lot of history of the language, we have lots of data as a government, but to get all these into a digitized machine learnable and in many cases voice learnable format is probably going to be one of the big uh, manual tasks or and then even that some can be automated i've been looking at technologies for that but to create those data sets will be the basis for getting that level of sophistication that now exists in english into the regional languages and it's our job to do that because we all want to preserve our mother tongue and our language hello sir so is Tamil Nadu government taking any proactive measures? Uh, there are some uh, instances of small startups leveraging. Uh, also, there are uh, challenges, uh, concerns raised by the technologists. They say that the inscription or the, the you know, uh, the way the Tamil is uh, in the internet, it is not easily be uh, encoded into this machine language algorithms uh, or what you call that in tokens. So, uh, is Tamil Nadu government talking on any of these areas? Yeah, I think uh, we are broadly in the process of uh, coming up with some uh, incentive and, and support policies in the in the IT uh, overall IT space, and certainly as the IT and CEO mentioned, around specific areas like AI. Uh, hopefully, it's sooner rather than later. I must confess that the previous IT policy, which has been around for five or six years, five years, has not had any takers. So something is clearly wrong in the way that our uh, incentive policies were set up, despite the fact that we have seen phenomenal growth. As many of you know, last year, Chennai's office uptake was double the uh, annual average of the last few years before that. So something is a bit off in the way we are setting up these policies. We'll, we'll figure out. But in the case of AI companies, I think really it's about access to data, access to computing power, and then you know, the, the basics of anybody else to have a startup space, to have power, to have uh, decent, uh, you know, infrastructure. The second question, I think, is a bit more complex. Already there's an issue. Tamil Nadu was uh, one of the early members in the UU Code Consortium, and we had been moving to come up with uh, all the Tamil texts to be machine readable and translatable uh, because of being compliant with UU Code for various reasons, and I don't want to talk politically here, but for various reasons that was not quite done. And a lot of proprietary codes were used and a proprietary fonts were used. And so we have a lot of problems, at least with government content that needs to be fixed. But there's a very clear solution, right? If they're all uh, universal code, they can be translated easily and machine read easily and can the machine learning can be programmed easily. So the more we move towards the standard code, uh, fonts, uh, then I think we'll be better off. We had to do that for other reasons anyway. We'll probably push even harder now for these reasons. Uh, hello, sir. Sir, uh, 
sir, on, oh, here, on your left. Uh, uh, I, I, be the last I, I, question. Yeah, I, I'm not sure I'm sophisticated enough to answer a lot of questions. Why don't we get the experts here? So anyway. Yes, the last yeah, one. I'll yeah, keep it short. Yeah. Sir. First of all, big fan. And uh, we've read about how open, OpenAI uses a lot of water in its data centers. So if India were to, you know, develop one of its own, and given the water shortages in the country, and especially in a state like Tamil Nadu, where we have faced a lot of water problems, and like water-based disasters, how would the government go about handling those kind of situations? Yeah, I, I'm not sure that AI data centers are going to consume a lot more water than generic data centers. Maybe I'm not well informed, but I think we have a broader problem, uh, which is, and I'll just take a crack at this without enough real depth. One is that data center power and water supply in general, I think, needs to be looked at both from, uh, you know, clean energy as well as uh, our overall water utilization is very, very inefficient. Even if you take advanced countries, the amount of recycling they do and the amount of uh, kind of, you know, multi-use, multi-reuse, we don't do much of that at all. So our long-term solution has to be not that there's shortage of water, as many of you can tell, is that we don't store it, we don't recycle it, we don't. So we got, we got a structural problem. I'm not sure it's unique for data centers. Data centers, I think, is more uh, important to us for other reasons. But I think uh, the cooling technology also is changing quite a bit. I've started to see a lot more air cooled rather than water cooled and there's some you know, in, in efficiencies in the design. So I think the broader perspective, at least from a government of Tamil Nadu's uh, view, is that we want renewable uh, energy and reusable cooling uh, system uh, with, with a lot of uh, recycling cooling systems and that will be true for data centers as much as is true for any other you know purpose and certainly i don't think we have a separate policy for ai data centers compared to gen data centers in general hi i'm gopi balasubramaniam i'm a ceo of a german startup uh, working on quantum computation um, my my question is i mean quantum computing is a deep tech technology and as you know europe and other western countries have export regulations and restrictions how does India and Tamil Nadu plan to tackle this um, in this constant, uh, in this context? Thank you. I can only give you one instance because I don't know about India. Uh, actually, I can say two things. One, the government of India has sponsored two uh, quantum computing centers. I'm not sure that's actually buying computing power, but maybe to innovate around quantum computing. One has already been allocated to the Northeast. Uh, I'm in talks with the government of India to get the other one allocated to Tamil Nadu. Hopefully they will, you know, it's a, it's a natural logical choice, but we never know. Um, the other uh, aspect is that one of the countries that does particularly well in uh, building quantum computers, as you may know, is Finland, you know, because of their old engineering uh, prowess and so forth. So actually we are in discussions with them uh, for a few months now. Uh, hopefully, we'll accelerate those to see if we can procure one from Finland and use that to create uh, some space for startups in the utilization of that and see how we can uh, benefit the ecosystem with that. Kurinda Vilay, Nirinda Taram, Tangal Tevi Kalanitum, Ore Hidatil, Jay Chandran.